Hello Rutbags, it's Jade, welcome to a grand new video. If you want more tips and guides, go and check out all my other content. And today we're focusing on the test live update that's gone live on Xbox and PC. If you want to know how to play that, go and check out the videos I've done for it. But yeah, we're going to take a look at floating bases, how you can build your own floating base. Now I say floating, it doesn't actually move along the water. It's not a raft, but it does make building on top of water a lot easier. And these are the brand new buoyancy foundations that you can get. So I'm going to show you how to unlock them i'm also going to show you the buoyancy marker as well and whether or not they're really worth it so make sure you like him make sure you're subscribed let's go let's build a floating tiny little house so as always it begins with burgle he's got a new chip sleuth mission for you it's called fishbowl and pretty much you're going to find another burgle chip which is going to be the pond chip and this unlocks the buoyancy foundation it also gives you the option to buy some brand new science signs but i think there's only like one science sign unless i'm wrong we'll take a look at that as well now buoyancy markers you can actually make just by finding and scanning the resources but if you want that special buoyancy foundation you need to go and get this chip. You don't need the quest but the quest is going to give you 2000 science points if you complete it. So I would try and cycle through the missions to get that quest first before you dive into the underwater areas. Just like it has been with the hedge and other areas, this is story content. So you are going to have to complete the water laboratory pretty much to gain access to the brand new building piece. So far in the test server, there are some changes and these might not be final. You can see you've got the foundation. It's only 2000 points, whereas normally some of this stuff is like up to 6000 or 10,000. The rewards for this mission have been reduced as well. Again, that's been reduced from 6,000 to 2,000. So they've kind of made everything a little bit cheaper, a little bit easier to get, and they've made everything just a little bit less expensive too. So the buoyancy marker, as I said, you don't need to do anything to unlock this other than just scan the items needed to craft it. You can see it needs one mold, one uh, pebblet, two silk rope, one eel grass, and one sprig. So once you've scanned a bunch of them, it should pop up. Once you've got all the ingredients, you can simply pop it down and there you go, it's ready to go. You can just put it in the water anywhere you want and it just acts as a waypoint, just like the rest of the waypoints you've got on land. Nice and simple and nice to keep track of exactly where resources are or enemies, etc. Now the buoyancy foundations themselves, well, you're going to need berry leather for these as well. So if you haven't got that scanned, you may want to go and do some of the hedge environment or the hedge missions just so you've got a good supply. I'm sure you've got loads at the moment. Although I do remember on test live, your progress might not have carried over and there are reports of people losing progress. So you may well have that to have started again. And there you go. You can just literally put them down just like you would with foundations and you can put them on water. You don't need to build massive highways or bridges going across the water anymore. You can just pick a certain point on the pond and go ahead and start building the base, the water raft building of your dreams. Again, don't know because it was just a bug, but it didn't seem to be taking too much damage when I was trying just to see what would happen. Obviously, you could recycle them, but yeah, they weren't taking any actual damage from me when I was hitting them. And I'm pretty sure they normally do or buildings do. So you only need like three eelgrass pieces, some of the berry leather and silk rope. So that's kind of expensive, but it is a lot easier than carrying loads of grass planks everywhere. So if you do want to build yourself a bridge, you might find this a bit easier to do. But yeah, using all that berry leather is going to take a long time. Unless you've got loads of it just hanging about and you're not doing much with it, then I guess that would be why you'd use it. Otherwise, people still might find it easier just to make a grass plank highway. I kind of want them to make it so that they can't use them over water. That would be good or if there's a limit to the range it's one of the things that bugs me with grounded that there's no limit to the building range like i really think like a foundation piece should maybe only have a 10 range limit on it and that will help i know it makes it a lot harder but yeah i want people's bases to be something really 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 thinking about structural integrity and stuff like that rather than just using one foundation piece to build a huge floating castle once you've got your foundations down though, you can go ahead and just build on top of it just like you would with any other base. You can put ceiling, wall pieces, anything you want and just build whatever kind of house or base you want. Okay, so long story short now, how do you get it? Well, when you go and turn the power on in the dome, in the underwater laboratory, you will find the little burgle chip next to it. This is simply what you have to return to burgle and it'll unlock the buoyancy foundations for you to buy with your science points. If you've not seen any of the leaked content previously, well, you just have to turn on these three breakers. There's three of them in the deepest underwater cavern area where you get access to the secret underwater laboratory. 
There's three different routes that you can get into the second chamber that's underneath. You can go to the plant pot that's just near the big massive blue net that's in the water. Dive down, you should see a plant pot and you've got an entrance way that you can swim down and eventually it will take you through to them big cav caverns and you can keep exploring and it's not too hard. You shouldn't find it too challenging finding all the science labs. The second entrance is kind of just opposite the plant pot that's laying on its side and it's a bit further away from the net, more or less towards the entrance towards the picnic bench in that direction. Pretty much go down and you will see the flying discman which is still there and then you kind of know you're in the right area. Again it's a pretty massive cavern, it's a pretty large opening, just swim down and you'll find it there. These two ways are pretty much the most safest way to get down as I didn't find too many diving bell spiders floating around, there wasn't any other enemies. It is a bit dark though so you will need lots of light with you otherwise you'll find it hard to get through. And then the third way is by the sunken dinosaur or T-Rex. Pretty much at the pagoda, swim down until you find a black cable and there'll be a small small opening which you can go through. You'll get some oxygen from the T-Rex and there's loads of the resource you need like the bone and the coir scales around here. Keep swimming along and you'll get to where the breakers are. There's not many oxygen plants down here so you are going to need something like the bubble helmet, the brand new diving gear or maybe use one of the potions, the smoothies that gives you extra breath or if you've managed to get some of the koi armor already, maybe you've already been down here I'm guessing, if you've come down here for the bones or for the scales chances are you probably have turned on the power. Once you have turned it all on you'll be able to exit into the lab from the water and go and explore all of this laboratory. At the moment there's not a lot going on in here, I'm hoping that in the next couple of weeks they'll update it and add some more content like some items like bandages and food and maybe some enemies to make it a bit more challenging. There is a bed so you can save progress if you have been spending a lot of time getting all them resources in the water or finding all of the breaker switches. Once you've explored you'll come across a door that is shut, you need to go over to this doorway here and there will be a switch directly in front of you with some science points and a glass ceiling below you. Pull that and that will open a door back where we just were and this will take you up to the corridor where you'll find the dome and the burgle chip. You'll also find one of the science scanners as well so you can go ahead and scan any brand new resources that you found. And then simply go up the ramp here and you'll find the big switch, pull the switch and make sure you get that burgle chip and you've completed the underwater laboratory. Remember this is the test live update, they've said they're going to add some more content to it before it comes out so I'm really hoping they will add some more creatures or make it a bit more difficult because even being underwater, which is quite difficult, it's still relatively easy. So yeah, don't blame me if you go in here and there's a bunch of taste teas or something like that because I reckon that's what they'll add to it. Return to Burgle and you'll go ahead and be able to buy the brand new science set as well as the buoyancy foundation. Now the science set is pretty not great value, it's literally like one picture and it's just that little for science little thing you see, the purple pink sign. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's only that one picture, the rest of these pictures you get from unlocking all the other science uh, sign points. So there we go, how to get yourself the buoyancy foundations and yeah it's good but again a little bit disappointed so far that it's too easy once more. We need more difficulty, we need these little challenges to be more compelling and I think the hedge was a good way about it, it was more puzzly but this one just is a little bit more, well you could probably cheese it if you're really really good at the game, you'd probably be able to swim down here almost in one go, get the foundation pieces, unlock the science lab, all done. But as I said, hopefully they'll add more. My name's Jade, that is it, I'll see you right back to another Grounded Guide very soon.